right, so I am out using my Overland trailer that I built from scratch, pretty much from scratch, DIY. Um, for the first time, my son Kai and I came out here to camp in um, the Laguna Mountains. We decided to, uh, east of San Diego, we decided to come out here um, and camp in a campground the first time, just, just in case um, we needed something and, you know, maybe the trailer, oh, there's a lot of bugs. The trailer wasn't working, so, um, Anyway, so I built this trailer, it took me a year and a half, and uh, it's right here behind me. You can see it right there. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the trailer, um, show you the outside, a little bit of what's on the inside, and um, then we'll open it up, kind of get the tent out and the kitchen out, and so you can see all that stuff as well. well this will actually be like an overview video. I'm just gonna you know show you the trailer, show you what I built, and then, in subsequent videos, I'll actually go through all the different steps for building this thing from fabricating the frame, putting on the suspension and the wheels, um, building the box for the cargo, putting the skin on the box, the cladding, um, the towers for the tent, um, the doors, and um, the electronics um, and miscellaneous other things. In addition to the videos in this series, you can find a collection of articles on Ordealist.com documenting the trailer build. I'll also include links to the trailer parts and equipment I used to build and outfit the trailer. This is the side door, the latch is there. Um, they have a hole there so you can lock it when it's closed. Uh, this is where I keep the cooler. It's a Pelican cooler, it rolls out, which is handy. It's got this nice handle, so you can just pick it up and roll it. Um, keeping a jug of water right there. That's the kitchen slider. And then you know, normally there's some cargo right there, but it's out on the picnic table right now. This is the back door. Now you can see the back door, same thing. Got these latches, hold it shut. Um, this is the kitchen slider, which I got from Overland Vehicle Systems. Top of the box is cladded with this diamond plate. Uh, I figure it was more durable, and I'm actually gonna use this for a cargo, like carrying, you know, surfboards, kayaks, any manner of thing could go up on top of here. And actually, these serve as nice lash down points. So I can put stuff in here and then lash it down. These are the stabilizer jacks I got from Kurt. Um, these guys are overkill, but I wanted to make sure I had enough to hold them in place, hold the, hold the trailer up. Um, these are really important. These actually, last night we slept in it and these really helped stabilize the tent. When I used to have it on top of the Jeep, the tent was always rocking around when we were sleeping up there, but this was a really stable platform. So I'm really happy with that. Here we got the wheels. I think these are some Pro Comp wheels, uh, BF Goodrich KO2s which are the same as what I have on the tent, or sorry, on the tent, on the Jeep right there. Um, the side is clad with aluminum and it's trimmed with aluminum, aluminum here. The fenders came from, actually the fenders and the towers for the rack 
both came from, I am confused, but it's either Danute or Compact Camping Systems. They sell a lot of um, DIY trailer parts. I highly recommend them for just getting things you need to build a trailer. But they sold these nice oversized fenders. I had to build this frame to support the fenders. Um, yeah, like I said, these are the, the towers for the tent. There's six of those. What else? Um, here you can see, so here is the junction box, bus box for the tether that goes, the seven pin connector that goes to the Jeep. That comes to here Then it runs back all the way. And that goes all the way back to the tail lights, which are here. These are the tail lights. And those are, the wiring is up under there. You can see it, it runs over. And then also there's wires that run over to the brakes for the Timberin axleless suspension. So that goes across. It doesn't go across. There's actually a frame member that goes across there to support, uh, stiffen it, but it's not really an axle. So you can see the Timberins under there. This is the rack. I actually used Super Strut for the rack. It's used for shelving, like industrial shelving. But I used that, and I built these brackets. You can see actually where it's where it's mounted. These are the, this is how the tent is held on to the Super Strut. And then I used these brackets here. Or I, I cut some Super Strut and it sticks out. And then this aluminum goes up, and then that's what holds the one of the awnings. So I have two awnings, an awning here and here. One thing that was cool about the Super Strut is that I, they have these little, all sorts of extra pieces, kind of uh, add-ons, fixtures. So on this, I was able to create this tower to hold the awning, but I was able to slip this guy in. I've got a little attachment point here and one over here. And so I can put lights or, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff I could attach to those that would, you know, be convenient in camp as just a place to hang something up. Up front, we've got a uh, lock and roll hitch. So it articulates in three different directions. And that connects to the receiver here on the Jeep which goes into the two by two, the two inch receiver. I guess I don't know what you call this, the adapter, but this rotates this way. And then this one rotates this way. So you get a lot, a lot of articulation. It also go, rotates up and down like that because these can pivot inside of here. Um, this is an XO, uh, stabilizer jack from ARC. These things are meant for off-road. You can see it says extreme off-road. Very durable. Um, nice big wheel on it. So if you need to roll it around <laughs> off-road, you can. What else? I think that's probably the overview. I mean, rooftop tent obviously is up here. It's a Smitty built tent that I got used. These awnings I got from Overland Vehicle Systems, they're, I wanna say they're like four and a half feet by eight feet, something like that. Um, I found them on sale, they were a really good price. And, you know, I'd love to have one of those 270 awnings that goes all the way around and kind of just comes out in one fell swoop. Uh, but they're really expensive, you know, over a thousand dollars. Um, the, these, I got them on sale. I want to say I got both of them for like 300 bucks on a really good sale. So they're more work, you know, they have poles inside and you have to, they're a little awkward to set up. 
and I haven't tried them yet in like a, you know, a, rain, a rainy day or something or wind. So they have to be staked down with guy, guy, wire, you know, guy lines um, in that situation. So I'll report back on how these guys work in weather. But the main thing is most of the time when we're camping, it's hot or we're in the, we go to the desert a lot. And even in winter during the day, you get a lot of sun. And so it's important to have shade. And oftentimes there's just no shade at all. So you have to bring your shade with you. So, you know, I could bring a separate uh, awning of some sort to set up, but this makes it a lot easier. They're just already here and I can pull them off. I don't have to pack them up each time. One reason I wanted to build the trailer was I had the rooftop tent on the top of the Jeep and I would go out, we'd go out camping. I'd wanna go do like a day of off-roading, hit some, hit some trails, but I had the tent on top. So I'd have to take the tent down. And then once I took the tent down, the tent was on top of the Jeep, which made the tent, the t Jeep tippy. So if I was any, on any kind of trail that was, you know, where I was getting a lot of articulation, the Jeep was leaning, made me really nervous. So hassle packing up camp and having to leave and then come back and set camp back up, or at least the tent back up. Um, ha little hindrance of off-roading off capability. So I decided I wanted to get a trailer um, of some sort. I have, my wife and I have a son, so a teardrop trailer would have been cool, but I don't, we could, I couldn't have built a teardrop that was off-road capable. I couldn't build it uh, for three, of, that could sleep three of us. So in the end, I decided to do this type of cargo trailer with a cargo box and a rooftop tent on top because rooftop tents, the nice thing about them is they're different sizes. So you can replace your tent and thereby get a bigger, tra you know, you can get a four person tent or you can scale down to a two person tent um, for us. Four person tent is nice, three to four person tent. So we have this Smitty belt, which I got replaced a previous uh, Tapui tent that I had that was really a two to three person, but really more of a two person. Uh, I believe Smitty belt markets this tent as a three to four person, but I think it's really more of a three person because um, two of us and a kid in there, I mean, it's comfortable, but I wouldn't want to go any tighter. You know, I'd love to have like a sprinter van or something like that, but I also want to have, you know, I live in San Diego. There's a lot of things to do in Southern California, a lot of good off-road spots. So I really want to keep my Jeep. I don't want to, us to go out and just go places in a sprinter van that has limited um, ability to go off-road. So I wanted to keep the Jeep, but also have a nice camper that made it more comfortable, easier to pack up, which is another big issue I think with overlanding out of a Jeep is that, or just out of any vehicle is that I, I, or, you know, just weekend camping even. We would go camping and I would spend hours finding everything, packing everything up. And I got a lot of flies out here. And, um, you know, the time we left, I was already like exhausted and irritable. So nice thing about this is I can kind of keep a lot of the stuff in here and you know it's a lot easier to get out of the house and get out camping for a weekend or even a night like tonight we're just out for a night it took me a while to pack up this time because it was the first time but now i've got everything in here and it's ready to roll next time we want to go out mm -hmm.